I'm going to try not to be so verbose and so <laughs> informationally, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think I'll forget that I um, got to that movement. And uh, the thing that God gave me to talk to you about basically is that I was uh, meditating about this year coming into 2015. You know, I like the numbers. And 15 is the number for grace and it's a number for rest. And it deals with the fact that uh, the first month, the 15th day of the first month was the feast uh, of 11 bread for Israel. In the seventh month, the 15th day is the feast of Pentecost or the feast of Tabernacles. So 15 in Hebrew has a lot of different uh, meanings. And then even part of art, which he didn't bring out, he started talking about it was when Hezekiah was being judged to judge his household, God gave him 15 more years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He said that when Hosea had to, went to purchase uh, Gomer, he purchased her for 15 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the other thing that God dealt with me is that God is commissioning us this year. Right. And right. the title, or just basically the subject I'm going to deal with, is the uh, Apostolic Commissions of Jesus. Amen. And I got that from a couple of things. And I got this mic on because y'all see our cross here? But this is a very unique cross, the Jerusalem cross. And there were some things that I found out about it, and I, I thought I'd share that with y'all, y'all. I learned something. Y'all want to learn something? <laughs> There's five crosses in the Jerusalem cross, Teach which me. represents Christ being the center and the other four being the four evangelists, or the four song writers, or the four letter writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It also emphasizes um, the five, the, this Jesus being the gospel, and the gospel being going out to the four parts of the world, north, south, east, and west. Mm. It also symbolizes the five marks that Jesus received on the cross. His hands, his feet, his head, and the spear in his side. But the other thing that the Holy Ghost gave me as an extension of why I'm dealing with the commissions is that it also can represent the fivefold ministry. <laughs> Jesus being the chief apostle and him the other gifts that he operated in, the prophet, the pastor, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Amen. So, that being said, if, did you know that there is a commission in every gospel for you? Did you know that? Mm. Hey, man, well, I thought I was Teach now. There right now. Teach now. So, and in each one of these gospels or these commissions, and the commission is, is I wanted to bring that up here, but I didn't bring that up. But when God commissions you, there's a, it is a duty or a act that you do on behalf of someone's command or, or request of you. So, there is an apostolic commission to each and every one of us in the Bible, in the four Gospels, as it pertains to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, how many of you know what Matthew Gospels represents? He talks about Jesus being what? King. And because Jesus is king, kings are leaders, right? Well, if you open up to Matthew 28, 18, that's the first one. I, I can read it or I can let you read it, but I know everybody knows that one. It says that. 28.18 starts out where Jesus says, all power is given unto me. First of all, so he let you know who got the power in heaven and in earth. Then he says, therefore, go into all the world, teaching them yeah. whatsoever I have told you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And lo, I was teaching them to observe everything I told you to do, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, there's a very interesting thing about that. He said, he didn't say in the names of, because Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are not named. So let me, let me learn you something right here. <laughs> Teach now. 
Remember I started out by saying that these are the commissions of Jesus. Apostolic commissions. A commission is when somebody gives you a, something to do. If I commission you to do something, Mother Mary, who name are you going in the commission of? Yours and mine or just or the one who gave you the commission? Yours. All right. Amen. So he started out the gospel by saying, all power is given unto me. So the name that represents the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Now that doesn't take away from people, you know, quoting the scripture verbatim, but that's the update to Revelation. It is definitely biblically sound to go out and preach and teach and represent the gospel in the name of Jesus without referring to Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. How do we know this? Well, I can go through the scriptures, but let me just help you. Romans says that there's no other name given unto heaven whereby we must be saved, but that the name of Jesus Christ, and that remission of sin should be preaching his name out. He says that salvation came by Jesus Christ. So there are numerous gospels, even by the particular of his name, the word Yeshua means the Lord our salvation. So that's commission is a commission that he gives to leaders. Uh -huh. Mark, Mark, Matthew writes to the king. So he's talking to his apostles and he's telling them, I got all power. I'm giving it unto you to do this and so and thus and I'm going to be with you. Uh -huh. So we as leaders are, are the first commission. He's given us the first apostolic commission to stick with the command of Christ. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Stick with what Jesus said. Amen. But he didn't leave y'all out. Ain't y'all so happy? <laughs> Mark 16, 15 through 18 is the second one. Is that Mark's gospel is written from the perspective of a servant. A lot of times in his gospel he uses the word straightway, immediately, and suddenly. These are terms that deal with servanthood. Like you want the kids, when you say do something, you want them to do it immediately. So, yeah. straightway. That's Am I right? That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> and in that verse, verse of scripture, it says this. And he said of them going to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any, oh no, sorry, right, they shall cast out demons, and they shall speak with new tongues, and they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not do no means harm to them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then he spoke these things, and after that was received up to heaven. So, First he's talking about the leaders, but then look at what happens with us as believers. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many of that y'all? Amen. Yeah. Man, that God ain't believable. Yeah. These signs shall follow them that believe. Come on, yeah. Come on. First, yeah. he will. That in my name he shall cast out devils. That's the first thing right there. First, you got one cast out the one that's in you. <laughs> How do you do that? You repent. Amen. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's that's the simplest way to cast the devil out of your life. Amen. Repent and believe on Jesus Christ. Now, ain't y'all so glad God made it simple? Amen. My Lord, y'all think y'all got to go to a big old service and wait in line? For a uh, prophet Bobo to lay hands on you, all you gotta do is say, "Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I ain't gonna do. I don't want to do this no more." And Hallelujah, the Olympus has just begun in your life. Aren't you happy? Amen. Lord, hand for that. Amen. But He didn't stop there. He's gonna empower you after you repent. He said, "You're gonna speak with new tongues." So if you was cussing, you probably ain't gonna cuss no more. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tongue that a lot of folks like you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
but he can also empower you to speak with the tongues of the heavens and of the, of the Holy Spirit. Then it says, if they take up any serpent, it will not harm them. If you get in a dangerous situation, unaware to yourself, and you can be poisoned by the poison of other people, or some, because we know a lot of serpentist like people, it says it ain't going to hurt you. I can think of a testimony, I, I, like I said, I went to visit a friend of mine, and from a situation that happened a long time ago, these young men that was there was kind of offended about the situation. But one of the guys, just out of the blue, while we sitting there talking, gets up and hits me dead in my jaw. I did not even feel it, it was so light. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even realize he hit me because I didn't feel it. And everybody, I can see it on everybody's face like. <laughs> and so, I was like, listen, man, this is probably something real stupid from a long time ago. I told my friend I'll just leave, so I grabbed my stuff and started to leave. I was coming out of his basement room there, going up the stairs, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, duck. And when I ducked, he was trying to swing his arm around me again and take my whole head off. But those are the type of things God will deliver you from just because you believe. Yeah. How many of y'all happy about that? You can be delivered from some dangerous situations just because you believe. Yeah. But then he want to use you. How many of y'all glad he want to use you? Amen. He says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I know God has used me like that. Have God used anybody out there, out there like that? To lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? Mm -hmm. Well, you need to start exercising that power as soon as you can. Because that power is given unto you as a servant. So these, in Mark, he's giving you, telling us the believers have been empowered. You as a believer are empowered. Even as my wife was talking about that earlier. You, God has given you power to do some things. But you got to walk in the commission, the authority that he has given to you as a believer to do these things. Sometimes people don't do these things out of fear or out of because they just didn't know. Well, it's right here. You got it written down. And if that ain't enough for you, we got it on CD. <laughs> the next commission is the commission of Luke. And that is Luke 24 44. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are getting something out of this? Amen. Glory to the Lord Jesus. Now, these three Gospels are known as the Synoptic Gospels because they're similar. If you notice, there were some similar things in each one. But if you look at these commissions, each one has something particular about the ministry of Jesus. Him being the chief apostle, like we were talking about on that cross, he said something different, or each one of these writers records something different about his ministry based upon who they were trying to reach. Matthew was trying to reach kings and leaders, so he wanted to let them know about his kingship and his authority. Mark was trying to reach normal, you know, people that was in uh, the service industry. He talked to centurions and you know people like that. So he wanted to let them know that your servanthood has to be aligned with the gospel, with the name of Jesus. Luke writes about common man. You as a man can have authority in the salvation and by salvation given to us in Jesus' name. So 2444 reads as this. And choo, choo, choo. Well, I had to start 2444 says, and it was about the sixth hour. No, that one is part of it. Yeah. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was with you, and all things must be fulfilled which was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So there's some things that have already been reported concerning him. Through these men. 46 says, And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Yes. Uh, and all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. 49 reads, And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endowed with power from on high. 
The reason we can, we as simple men need to be empowered with power from on high. So that we will have the power to do what he said, repentance and remission of sins to be preached in his name. Not in nothing else, because that's where the power is. Is that you as a common man, you walk in power by that creed. What is, and the reason why I can say this is because when you look at the gospel, when, when Paul, I mean, when Jesus asked him, said, who do men say that I am? And some of them said this, and that's John the Baptist. But when he said, who do you say that I am? And when Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, he said, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. Because the first answer was given about who do men say that I am. But once you break the plane between men and God and said that thou art the Christ, he said, now you ain't confirmed with flesh and blood anymore. You being empowered with the Spirit of God to speak that which is God has said. And that's how remission is. That's why the power of preaching is so powerful. Is that you would never believe that a person could be convicted to be saved and come to Jesus Christ just through mere words. But it's because that in those words, you're preaching the conviction that through Christ, you can be saved and set free. Remission deals with. The save part, the set free, or your repentance deals with the being saved part. The remission means is the set free part. It ain't enough sometimes to just be saved, but you need to be set free. <laughs> There's a lot of people that say, I hear me. Y'all know a lot of people that just say, but how many people do you know that set free? Because that's what the extension of what he's saying here in Luke. And then he says that from the beginning at Jerusalem and to all nations, and ye are witnesses of these things. Mm -hmm. So this commission deals with salvation or the remission of, of, of sins being in Jesus and him empowering us as mortal men with power beyond our control. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good. And the last one is John. John deals with Christ's deity. He deals with Christ being God, fully God and fully man. Now, a lot of people probably didn't know there was a commission in the Gospel of John. Did anybody know there was a commission in the Gospel of John? Mm -mm. Well, let me help you. Thank you, Jesus. John's commission is found in the 15th chapter, 14 and 17. And you want to tell by the words that he used why this is a commission. Thank you. What did I say? 15. All right. Thank you, Lord. Now, it is dealing with a, this is dealing with a, a conversation he was having with the disciples. But he begins to interject before he goes into his scripture in 16 and 17, which we know about the Lord's Prayer and all that. He says, I, uh, it's a very familiar text. I think this is one of our apostles' favorite texts. I am the vine, and thou art the vine, my father, the vine dresser. But 14 says that ye are my friends, and if you do what I command you, amen. amen. No longer will I call you servants, for servants do not know what the master doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made unto you. When you begin to walk in a relationship with God, you get intimate with him. Or he gets to know you and you get to know God. This is a commission given to uh, dealing with our relational thing with him. God wants to have a relationship with us, everybody in this room. And how many of y'all know that if you follow a commission from somebody, it's not from somebody that's hearsay. A commission usually comes from somebody you respect, somebody you honor, somebody you are submitted to, whether it's a boss or a pastor or a father or a mother. A commission comes from somebody that you are normally in relationship with. So it don't come from just any old body. So then he says this. And this is the one I where the commission comes from. 16 says, and you did not choose me. 
But I have chosen you that and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever I ask the Father, and whatever you ask the Father in my name, these may be he may give to you. Now that's the commission right there. You have not chosen him. He has chosen you. And that you need to do something with what he's chosen you to do. And that you should bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should not just be a one-time fruit and be gone forever. That your fruit should remain. This is a commission of extension. John talks about God and his deity because God is eternal. Your fruit, especially your spiritual fruit, should be eternal. Because when you leave here, your fruit should remain in the earth. If you have a child and you die, normally the progression is that the parent died before the child. The child is the fruit of your womb, of your womb, the fruit of your lungs. They should speak of who you are after you're gone. So that is the reason why your fruit is all should remain. But you should put time, you put time into fruit. Fruit that don't come overnight. And so this is a commission to let you know that, first of all, that the power of this fruit don't come from you. Amen. Aren't you so happy? Amen. It comes from Jesus. Yes. So, I have, he said, you have not chosen me, for those of you who think y'all chose Jesus. Because y'all was waiting and looking for Jesus, like people say, well, I'm looking for the Lord. No, you're not looking for the Lord. <laughs> He like the prodigal son, as the apostle was preaching some time ago, he's looking for you, waiting for you to come back. And then he embraces you and says, and then he gives you the power to produce fruit. That's part of the commission. A lot of people don't think that fruit is a, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that bearing fruit is a continual part of your lifestyle. But it should be. I like when Mother Mary was talking about her ministry to the young man today. That that is the beginning of fruit being to be born in this man's life. Amen. Once you break the mold of the depression and frustration in a person's life, then they begin to you can begin to plant mm -hmm. the seed of the gospel in that person's life so that somebody can come along and water it and then he can be fruitful. So I like this one because it says that, and these things I command you, that you love one another. That's a part of your fruit too. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, love joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, meekness, goodness. Against such there is no law. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of the fruit too. These things I command you, that you love one another. So amen. Those are the four commissions. Apostolic Commissions of Jesus Christ, and I hope you find yourself in one of them so that we can begin to give God the glory with our lives and, and that he can be pleased with us when we say, see the Father. Amen? God Amen. Amen.